Good evening, Charleston First Church. Are we on there, Jeff? Now I hear it. Good evening, Charleston First Church. Good evening, Elk River. We are so glad to be with you tonight. And we're going to sing a little bit. We're going to preach a little bit. We're going to pray a little bit. But we're going to worship a whole lot. And so we've come for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to praise Jesus. I pulled out a course tonight thinking that Pastor Randy would know it. And you know what? He said he didn't know it. Susan, we're going to that other course you know first, the one you don't know. There we go. We'll get it here. But back in the 1980s, NYI, anybody know what that means? Nazarene Youth International picked as one of their theme songs, one of their quadrennial theme songs, this little course that says, Jesus is Lord. And so if you don't know it, you can learn it. It's real simple, very simple words. If you do know it, sing it with me tonight as we sing together. With my heart I believe Jesus Christ is Lord and that Jesus rose again Jesus Christ is Lord. With my lips I confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. And I too shall live again, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Lord of my life. Jesus is Lord, Lord of my life. Jesus is Lord. Lord of my life, Jesus is Lord. Now, how many of you have heard that before? Every one of you, we just sung it, folks, so everybody's heard it now. So I think everybody ought to be able to try to join with us now as we sing it. With my heart I believe Jesus Christ is Lord and that Jesus rose again. Jesus Christ is Lord. With my lips I confess Jesus Christ is Lord and I too shall live again. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Lord of my life. Jesus is Lord, Lord of my life. Jesus is Lord, Lord of my life. Jesus is Lord. Can you testify to that tonight? That Jesus is Lord. You're going to hear a lot about that tonight because that's kind of the theme of our evening together tonight is Jesus is Lord. So I want you to sing with me another old hymn. It's really not that old hymn. It was written back in, I think, 1973 by some guy named Gaither. He's wrote a couple songs that are pretty good, but he wrote one back then that said, Jesus is Lord of all. I want you to sing it with us tonight. Oh, my tomorrows, all my past, Jesus is Lord of all. I've quit my struggles, contentment at last, Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus is Lord of all. All my possessions and all my life, Jesus is Lord of all. All of my conflicts, all my thoughts, Jesus is Lord of all. His 
His love wins the battles I could not have fought. Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus is Lord of all. All my possessions and all my life, Jesus is Lord of all. All of my longings, all my dreams, Jesus is Lord of all. All of my failures, His power redeems. Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus is Lord of all. All my possessions and all my life, Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. Aren't you glad for that thought tonight? That Jesus is Lord. I uh, have studied a lot this week and over the last several weeks about this thing of him being Lord. And I came across this quote that I want to share with you at this point. And it goes like this. At the end of the day, there are only two types of people. Those who will willfully bow and confess him as Lord and those that will be forced to bow their knees at the final judgment, acknowledging him as Lord. One way or the other, we will either do it of our own accord, or some of these days, at that final judgment, we'll have to bow and finally acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. One of my very favorite hymns in all the hymnal is found on page 111. We don't have our hymnals out, but you know these words. Probably I like to sing this one a lot. That simply says, my wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord. Let's praise him as we sing tonight. I have found a deep peace that I never had known. And a joy this world could not afford. Since I yielded control of my body and soul. My wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, by angels and seraphs in heaven adored, I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. I desire that my life shall be ordered by thee, that my will be in perfect accord. With thine own sovereign will, thy desires to fulfill, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord. By angels and seraphs in heaven adored, 
I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. All the talents I have, I have laid at thy feet. Thy approval shall be my reward. Be my store, great or small, I surrender it all. To my wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord. By angels and seraphs in heaven adored. I bow at thy shrine my savior divine my wonderful wonderful lord thou art fairer to me than the fairest of earth thou omnipotent life-giving word O oh, thou ancient of days, thou art worthy all praise, my wonderful, wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord. By angels and seraphs in heaven adored, I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Susan, if you'll just keep on playing, I would appreciate it. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. We're going to go to the Lord. And we're going to bring our burdens and our concerns to him. I'm going to ask Bob Keys if he'll make his way this direction. I want him to pray tonight. But we want to remember those requests that Pastor Randy brought forth this morning. Continue to pray for Carolyn. That's Marilyn Clark's sister. God knows what's going on. God knows the situation and God's still in control. There's nothing too big for him. Continue to pray for Patty and Joyce Bumpus. Uh, Patty is at her sister Joy's house. And Joyce is in Cleveland Clinic. And so we want to be sure and remember both of them in the days ahead. Continue to remember Raymond Bias' daughter-in-law as they get ready to bring her home. And Pastor Randy said there was going to be a lot of adjustments. Let's just remember this situation. Continue to remember Alicia Fleming. She's got COVID and uh, others. J Jim Roberts down at Charleston First Church. I tell you what, there's just a lot of needs, aren't there? A lot of things out there that we need to pray about. And so many of them we don't remember when it comes time for prayer. But aren't you glad we have a God that never forgets? He knows what we need, it says, before we even ask him. What an assurance that is for us as believers. When we can't remember them, or when we get to the point where we don't even feel like we can pray, guess what? He's already working in our behalf. Why? Because he's our wonderful Lord. Our wonderful, wonderful Lord. Bob, would you come and lead us tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer? You know, as Christians, as children of God, we have the opportunity to talk to God on your behalf. What a privilege that is. What a blessing that is that we can go to our God and tell him about our brothers and our sisters, about the world, about our friends, about whatever it's on our heart. God has so ordained it that we can do that. And prayer is such a, such a privilege and such a wonderful thing. So let's, let's all pray together this evening. Heavenly Father, you are our Lord. We're glad that 
Many days ago, many years ago, Lord, we made you Lord of our life. And Lord, all we want to do is to serve you, to lift you up, to be a blessing to others, to tell the gospel story, Lord, to be grateful and thankful for all that you mean to us and you do do for us moment by moment. We're not guaranteed of the next 30 seconds, Lord, but your grace has been sufficient to us and you've blessed us and you've allowed us to be here with you tonight. Sing the songs, hear a beautiful message and pray and worship you. We're thankful for that this evening, Lord. We ask that you do uh, all these needs. There are many needs, Lord. Seems The needs seem so great, but we serve a God who knows all about it. We serve a God who answers prayers. He not only hears our prayers, you answer them, Lord. And we all can testify to the answered prayers that you've given us in our lives. And so, Lord, we're great. We we're, we're gladly lift up these names and these needs to you tonight. The sick, uh, those who are away from you, Lord, those who are, are, are lonely, whatever the need is, Lord, we lift their names to you tonight. And I ask that you be close to them, give them the peace, and I ask for a touch that only you can give. Lord, we've experienced that touch. We know what it is to be touched uh, by the hand of God, and we thank you for that. Bless Joe this evening, Lord, as he brings this message. I pray you'll just give him freedom. Uh, may your spirit... Uh, be with him and be with us tonight, Lord. Thank you for those who are here and by the way of the internet. Lord, this is not time, this is not wasted time. This is time well served. This is time well used. Again, Lord, we love you tonight and we thank for all that you've done for us and we'll give you praise and glory for asking in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Sing with us tonight. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And let's make it personal tonight. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He is risen from the dead and he's my lord every knee shall bow every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord Aren't you glad tonight that we could sing that with assurance? Many years ago, Lanny Wolf wrote another song. I sang a Lanny Wolf song last Sunday morning. But he wrote another one that I like to sing a lot and I like to hear a lot. And it simply says, Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. It's a little prayer that we ought to pray tonight. And I want us to think about it tonight as we get ready to go into the Lord's word together. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart. Let's sing that again. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart. Let's sing, Jesus, I surrender all. Jesus, I surrender all. 
Jesus, I surrender all. Jesus, I surrender all the kingdoms of my heart. Jesus, be the Lord of all. Jesus, be the Lord of all. Jesus, be the Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. Amen. Thank you, Susan. Don't we appreciate Susan? I know she likes to be with her kids on Sunday nights, but I kind of enjoy having her sitting over here and playing this piano. She does a great job, and we appreciate that. I hope you've picked up a theme tonight. I've mentioned that already, but I hope you've picked up that theme of lordship. I'm concerned in the church world today that we have a generation of Christians that are all about making him savior, but they're not on board with this thing of making him Lord. Can I say to you tonight that I believe that there are two different things that we're talking about when we make him savior and when we make him Lord. They're not the same thing. Imagine with me. We're going for a walk down by the Canal River. Okay? And I fall in. My wife would tell you I swim like a rock because I don't know how to swim. So if I fall in and we're walking there together and I fall in and you jump in and pull me out, you are my savior. But that does not make you my Lord. There's two different things that we're talking about when we talk about him being savior and him being Lord. I've heard a lot of people stand in church and they stand and they testify and they say, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all that he's done for me. And I wonder sometimes, not to play judge, but I wonder sometimes, do you really understand what you're saying when you call him Savior and Lord? Do you fully understand what we're talking about when we refer to him as Savior and Lord? You see, a Savior is a person that saves someone or something from danger. A Savior is someone that, or something that saves you from danger. In the spiritual realm, we're talking about how Jesus Christ died on the cross, but we come to him, we ask forgiveness, we turn from our sins, and guess what? He saves us from our sins. He then becomes our savior. What a great experience. Now, I want you to understand, and I want to say this right up front. Throughout the remainder of this message, I don't want you to think that I am doing away with the salvation message because we're not doing that at all. You must be saved, the scripture says. The scriptures teach us that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save those that were lost. And guess what? That was all of us at one time. We were all lost, and he came to seek and to save us, and when he saved us, when we turned from our sins and we turned from our wickedness, guess what? He became our savior. But that doesn't mean that he became 
your Lord. Because making him Lord is something completely different. You see, by definition, Lord is someone or something having power, authority, or influence over. In spiritual term, Jesus becomes my Lord when I surrender to his authority and his dominion in my life. When I say to him, Lord, I want you to have everything about me. I want you to have everything. I remember hearing growing up in the church. I, I've said it before. I grew up in the church of the Nazarene. I've been around for a long time. And I remember hearing those old-time preachers preach about how you had to come and you had to give God everything. You gave him your past, your present, your future. You gave him that unknown bundle. You gave him those things. You didn't even realize everything that was involved with it. But there came a point in your life where you were required. If he was to be your Lord, you were required to give those things up to him and surrender your will to his will. Now I want to ask you a few questions tonight. I, I said earlier I may not be preaching very long. I hope that's the case. Jeff says, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. But I really don't have a whole lot to tell you tonight. But I want us to look at some questions. And one of the first questions I want us to look at tonight is why would, want, why would Jesus, or people want Jesus to be their Savior but not their Lord? You see, I, we, we live in a society where, where we have preached the salvation message over and over and over again, and we've preached, folks, if you make your way to the front, shake hands with the preacher, or you come up and you kneel and you, you ask Jesus to forgive you. That's all you got to do to make it to heaven. Folks, we're missing it. We're missing it. It's so much more than just coming to an altar and saying, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. There's so much more to this thing of making him Lord of your life. So much more. Our scripture reading tonight is over in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Beginning at verse 21, we find these words. Matthew 7, chapter, or verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. What a sad thought. Our churches are filled with people. that are missing it because they've never made him Lord of their lives. They like the thing of salvation. Why? Well, let's face it. That's the get out of hell card. Hey, I came and I asked Jesus into my heart, so therefore I get out of hell. Woo, glory. That is exciting. But if that's all it is, aren't we missing something? There are some out there that maybe, maybe it's this thing of, well, I, I don't mind making him Savior because it doesn't cost me anything. Jesus already paid the price, and aren't you glad that Jesus paid the price for our salvation? So therefore, I'll take a chance at it. What am I out? What am I out if I give my heart to Jesus? If I say, yes, I, I want Jesus to be my, I, I've lost nothing. It didn't cost me one single thing. It cost him his life. But salvation is free. Could it be that some have said that they want Jesus as Savior but not Lord because they want to avoid the curse of sin, which is eternal damnation and eternal death? 
What's the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23 say? The wages of sin of de is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So maybe, maybe we wanted to be our Savior just so we don't die eternally. Could it be to avoid the condemnation of sin? For you see, Paul said over in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So therefore, we are no longer condemned because of our, hey, those are all good reasons to let him be our Savior. But if we stop at making him our Savior, we're missing it, folks. Because what he wants to do is he wants to become our Lord. Let me tell you something. The New American Standard Version of the Bible, it's one that I constantly and, and refer to and I like to read a lot. I'm using it because that's the example I have, okay? 36 times. I'm sorry, 37 times. In 37 verses, do we find the word Savior? In all of the Bible, 37 times in 37 verses. The word Lord, get this, 7,800, and I believe it's 37 times in over 6,000 verses where we talk about the lordship of Jesus as opposed to Jesus as Savior. You see, there on the day of Pentecost, you know, when the disciples were filled and, and they went out and they, the church started and everything and that guy that kept putting his foot in his mouth earlier by the name of Peter. He stood up that day and he said, this same Lord and Jesus that I want you to hear about, this is the one I'm wanting to tell you about. Guess what? This same Lord and Jesus. That was the beginning of the early church. And the theme of the early church was not Jesus is my Savior, but what? Jesus is Lord. And folks, if we lose and miss that message in the church today, we are missing a vital part of what God has for us. He wants us to know he wants to be Lord of our lives. He doesn't want to be just Lord of part of your life. He wants to be part, Lord, of everything. It requires a total surrender. Over in the book of Genesis chapter 22, we find a story that is very familiar to us. It's the story of Abraham and Isaac. And you know, Abraham was taking Isaac up to the mountain to sacrifice him. And he takes him up and Isaac looks at him and said, Dad, I see the fire or the wood and I see everything here to start the fire, but where's the sacrifice? And he said, God will provide. God will provide. They went on up the mountain and I'm sure by this time Isaac's probably scratching and saying, Dad, where's the sacrifice? Look, I, I mean, this is getting real now for Isaac. And can you imagine when his father lays him on the altar and he straps him on and he's still looking at Dad saying, Dad, where's the sacrifice? But I like what it says there in that chapter in verse 12. It says... Because Abraham held back nothing, God provided. Because God or Abraham held back nothing, guess what? There was a little ram over in the thickets that God provided. Why? Because Abraham held 
back nothing. Can I tell you tonight that Jesus wants to be Lord of everything in your life? Your kids? Your spouse? Your job? Your money? Your home? Your vehicle? Everything about you, if it involves you, guess what? He wants to be Lord of it. And just as Abraham was told there, look, because you've held back nothing, I've got you. But if we go over into the book of Mark, we find another story, a very familiar story about a rich young ruler that came to Jesus one day. And he said, what do I have to do to be saved? Jesus said, well, you've got to follow the commandments to start. And Jesus said, or the rich young ruler said, Jesus, I've done all that from the very beginning. From my childhood, I've done what I was supposed to do. I've followed the commandments. And then Jesus looked at him. He said, then go sell everything you've got. And follow me. Mark chapter 10, verse 21. We find these few words. One thing you lack. Can I tell you tonight... The difference between a victorious Christian life and a defeated Christian life could be one thing that we want to hold back. It could be one thing that we want to hold back. God, you can have all of this, but I'm not sure I'm ready to give you that one. God, here's this part of my life, and you're, you're more than welcome to, but just not sure I'm ready to give that one to you. And we wonder why we go around defeated in our Christian lives. Could it be that God has told us over and over and over and over again, I want you to give some things up. I want you to give me some things. I want you to surrender some things. And we look at him and say, God, you can have all of this, but you can't have that. That chorus we sang right before I started the song says, in my heart are kingdoms of a world that's all my own. Kingdoms that are only seen by myself and God alone. In the past when I tried to rule my world, it just seemed to fall apart. So please, Jesus, be the Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. I guess I only fooled myself when I said I had yielded all. Because in a secret corner of my heart was a kingdom that did not fall. I surrender now, make my heart your throne. Rule as kingdoms great and small. Because if you're not Lord of everything, then you're not Lord at all. You see, each and every one of us have a throne in our hearts. When we are in charge and when we are Lord of our own lives, and we're making the decisions, guess what? We're sitting on that throne. There's also a cross there. And when we're sitting on the throne, guess who's on the cross? But what Jesus wants to do is he wants us to get on the cross. He tells us that over in the book of Matthew. He says, if anyone wants to follow me, he must deny himself, take up his cross every day and follow me. taking him off the cross and putting him on the throne. That's what he's looking for. That's what he wants. 
We have to be willing, if he is to be Lord, to give up everything for him. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. What does it look like when Jesus is Lord? I have four words, or just five, maybe six, okay? That I think will help us understand what it means to make Jesus Lord. The first one is this, anything. Anything. Yes, anything. Anything, Lord, you tell me to give up, it's yours. Anything. If it's my family, if it's a habit, if it's my pocketbook, if it's my job, if it's a relationship, Anything, anything that you want. If you're going to be Lord of my life, I have to be willing to give up anything. Second word, real quick. Anytime. You see, the scriptures teach us and tell us a story of a man that wanted to follow Jesus. But what did he say? First of all, let me, let me go bury my loved one. But Jesus said, no, I want you to follow me now. I want you to follow me now. Anything, anytime. You see, it's not when we decide we want to give it up. It's when God says give it up that we have to be willing to give it up. Anything, anytime. Are you ready? Anywhere. Anywhere. Now, we can take that a lot of different places. We can say anywhere you speak to us, we're going to listen Anywhere you want me to go, I'm going to go. Anywhere you want me to be, that's where I'll be. Anything, anytime, anywhere, at any cost. Wow. Wait a minute. I thought this salvation thing was free. It is. But can I tell you, when we make him Lord of our lives, it costs us everything. Because we have to be willing to say, whatever the cost, whatever the cost, whatever it costs me, if I lose it all, if I... Whatever the cost. Anything. Anytime. Anywhere. At any cost. Why do we find it difficult to make him Lord of our lives? Folks. Because there's not a whole lot of people today. That are willing to say anytime. Anything. Anywhere. At any cost. But that's what he commands of us. Why do we find it difficult? Because the cost is just too great. It's going to cost me too much. I can't make him Lord because it's going to cost me too much. Folks, if Jesus was willing to give his life for us, what makes us think that anything he asks of us to give up is too much? How is that 
too much. I want to ask you tonight, what are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? You see, this hits close to home. We, we don't mind people preaching up here and talking about some things as long as they don't hit too close to home. But this is something we all have to look at. We all have to ask this question. God, are there things in my life that you're wanting that I'm holding on to? Are there things that I'm holding on to that you have said you wanted me to give up? Here's, here's it's not funny, but it kind of is. Most of us already know what those things are. It's not like Jesus has to come out here and beat us over the head with, most of us already know what those things are. Guess what? It all comes down to this thing of are we willing to surrender? Can I tell you something tonight? And I want you to remember this. Victory does not come with the struggle. Victory comes with the surrender. Victory doesn't come with the struggle. It comes with the surrender. When we come to the point in our lives where we can finally say, Jesus, here it is. The struggle is over. The struggle is over with. Guess what? We can finally get victory over those things because the struggle has stopped and the surrender started. Folks, when we surrender... We need to surrender hands down. Hands down. Have you ever tried to open your hands and hold on to something? It's not very easy. You see, so many times, though, we want to we wanna say, here, God, you can have it. I'm going to give it to you. And as soon as we get ready to give it, guess what? No, wait a minute. I'm, I'm just not quite sure. And we want to snatch it back. He says, I don't want that kind of surrender. He said, I want palms down. I want you to give it to me so that you can't keep holding on to it. So you don't keep holding on to it. I want you to give it up. And when you surrender, that's when the victory will come. I want to ask you tonight, is he your Lord or is he your Savior? Is he your Lord or is he your Savior? Can I tell you something? Here's the beauty of making him Lord. He throws salvation in for free. When we make him Lord, he comes in and he forgives us. But, folks, we have to be willing to surrender to make him Lord. Susan's going to come. And I want us to think tonight for just a few moments. And I want you to ask yourself tonight, what is it in my life that I need to give up? What is it I need to give up to make him Lord of my life? Lord, are there things in there that you've been dealing with and you've talked to me about over and over and over again? And for whatever reason, I've just continued to hold on to them. And the fact of the matter is, you've not been Lord of everything. Because there's things in my life that I keep holding on to. Listen to these words tonight. There's a voice calling me From an old rugged tree 
and it whispers draw closer to me leave this world far behind there are new heights to climb and a new place in me you will find for whatever it takes to draw closer to you lord that's what i'll be willing to do for whatever it takes to be more like you that's what i'll be willing to do I'll trade sunshine for rain, comfort for pain. That's what I'll be willing to do for whatever it takes for my will to break that's what i'll be willing to do listen to these words take the dearest things to me if that's how it must be to draw me closer to thee let the disappointments come lonely days without the sun if through sorrow more like you i'll become take my houses and my lands Change my dreams and my plans For I'm placing my whole life in your hand And if you call me someday To a land far away Lord, I'll go there and your will obey for whatever it takes to draw closer to you lord that's what i'll be willing to do for whatever it takes to be more like you that's what i'll be willing to do i'll trade sunshine for rain comfort for pain that's what I'll be willing to do for whatever it takes for my will to break. That's what I'll be willing to do. Are you willing? whatever it takes lord whatever i have to give up whatever i have to give in to draw closer to you and make you lord of my life i'm willing to give it father tonight we thank you 
We thank you for your word. Father, so many times we don't understand exactly how you're leading or why you lead in the way that you do. But Father, we believe tonight this message was for someone. We believe tonight, Lord, that there are those that are in the church. Maybe that have asked you to be the Savior of their life, but they've never gone on to make you Lord of their lives. Father, would you help them to come to that place of total surrender where they give it all to you, whatever it takes to draw closer to you. Help us to be willing to do that. Father, dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. Bring us back at the appointed time, prayed up and expecting great and mighty things from you. In Jesus' name we pray, and we ask it all this evening. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for listening. Make Jesus Lord. <laughs>